for Henry. I'm taking you back, boy. I wasn't trying to escape, Sheriff. Demon got hold of me. Demon, huh? <laughs> Dodge Demon. Brand new car. You little devil, ain't you? Little? Got all kinds of power. Lowest price Dodge on the road, too. Uh-huh. Torsion air ride. Uh-huh. Just makes you want to keep going. Oh, uh, uh. End of the line, Henry. Go ahead on, boy. Get on in here, Henry. Where you been? <laughs> They're coming to get you, Barbara. Buried deep in the Pacific Northwest, one team in Springfield, Oregon, takes on the impossible, finding dead Mopar muscle and bringing it back from the grave. Award-winning master of Mopar, Mark Warman, his cousin, Doug, his daughter, Alyssa, his best friend, Royal, his painter, Will, his assembly tech, Justin, and the rest of the GYC ghouls are restoring, resurrecting, and recreating some of the fastest, fiercest, and rarest muscle cars on the planet. This is Graveyard Cars. So a few years ago, we started working on this 1971 Dodge Demon. This is a real Mr. Norm's car. There's a lot of history behind it. Norman Krauss, also known as Mr. Norm, started Grant Spalding Dodge in Chicago with his brother Lenny. Mr. Norm specialized in performance Dodge cars, leading the charge into the muscle car era with a Mr. Norm Sport Club and some truly game-changing modifications. Famous for their GSS, Grand Spalding Special modifications, when Dodge's engineer said something couldn't be done, Mr. Norm showed them how. Mr. Norm was the first to develop the 383 1967 Dart and the 440 1968 Dart. Both promptly became prototypes for Dodge. But sadly, as the muscle car era subsided in 1973, the dealership took a hit. Mr. Norm sold his ownership in Grand Spalding Dodge in 1977. The dealership closed in the late 1980s. Fortunately, Mr. Norm's lives on, with parts and even the sport club available online. So last time you guys got to see the car, we were just sending it off to be dipped. We had it disassembled, getting ready to go off. While it was over being dipped, I took a little bit of time, called the owner up, and started learning Mr. Norm's cars. Until you actually do a certain particular type of car, you may not know as much as there is to know about it. There are still guys out there right now who know a heck of a lot more than I do about the Mr. Norm's cars. But getting acclimated with this one was really exciting because it is so loaded with documentation. It's incredible. I mean, to just come across a car, period, that you might have the original point of sale on it or the original Monroney, that's one thing. But to have everything like this, to have that Monroney, the original window sticker, to have the original point of sale from Grand Spalding Dodge, showing how much they paid for it, how much money they put down on it, you got the original key tag that has the code on it, the envelope that those keys came in. You have every single piece of literature that a person could have. Somebody had the forethought to hold on to all this stuff. And when you look at it and you realize that this car could very easily be one of one by the time you reduce down all of the options on it and that it was Mr. Norm's car, it's fascinating. Now this car, while it is a well-documented car, was also a Midwest car. I mean, that's where Mr. Norms was, in Chicago. So this car was very, very rotten. A lot of metal had to be replaced on it. The main floor had to be replaced. The trunk pan, transmission cross member, frame rails, torsion bar cross members. I mean, there was a lot of metal on this car that was really rusty. And the only way to do it is to do it right. So we installed all brand new AMD sheet metal. One of the few bright spots in this metalwork was that the quarters, for the most part, other than really far down low, were good. So we didn't have to replace full quarters. So we can say the outer sheet metal is mostly original on this car. 
So we did have to replace the trunk pan, as I had mentioned. It was really, really rotten. It needed to be replaced. To do it on an A body, you have to drill out all of the rear body panel spot wells, because it spot wells to that rear body panel. So when you see the guys going through there one at a time, they're breaking those two loose. They're separating them so that we can get that trunk pan out. But we didn't have to replace the rear body panel. Now the under seat pan, again, I like to keep as much original sheet metal when possible on a car. We just did a section. It was a fairly large section, but I would say half of the under seat pan is still original on that car. Our 1971 Dodge Demon, 340, four speed. Mr. Who's car? Norms. Yes. Yeah. You know the answer, just shoot it right out there. Mr. Mr. Norm's car. You know, Mark owns graveyard cars and he owns the division, which is the company that makes the show. But the problem is, is that Mark is the editor now, he's the producer, he's the writer, and he loves to hear himself talk. So it's all Mark all the time, and it's like three-year-old material now. Mr. Norm's car has got all of its sheet metal done. This is the weld-in stuff. So we were able to get the trunk floor put in today with the provisions that need to go with that. So done, should be able to move over shortly to the mud room. That's a good thing. I'll be painting it soon. I have no idea what Will's talking about. You guys known me for 10 years. That's not my style, all right? I'm just trying to share with everybody our plight, if that's okay if I can use that word, our journey to get where we're at. If along the way telling that story, we have to show something that happened earlier, so what? It's television. Doesn't mean I'm a narcissist. Like I say, if you know the answer, just throw it right out there. <laughs> gonna... You know what that's from, right? No. It's my cousin Vinny. Step into the brand new world of compacts. Dodge Demon 471. Priced way down there, but it's got it all. Torsion bar suspension, unibody construction. Smart, roomy, comfortable. New Dodge Demon joins Dodge Dart 471. The spirit of 71 is Dodge 71. This year, you can't afford not to be Dodge material. In 1971, Dodge introduced the Demon built on the A-body platform. It was available with a slant six, 318, and the high revving, high horsepower 340. Standard transmission was a three-speed manual. Optional was the four-speed and the automatic transmission. True or false, 1971 was not only the first year for the Dodge Demon, it was also the last year for the Dodge Demon. Then you got Mark, you know, Mr. Narcissistic himself, you know, putting himself in everything in his Rambo shirts and his 1980 Ray-Bans. You know, this is an old trivia section, so all of you at home have to watch it again. It's just typical Mark. If you think you know the answer, stay tuned after the break, I'll let you know. I've been with Mark since the beginning, back in 07. I'm a co-creator of the show, and uh, I can tell you with a fair amount of confidence that yeah, Will is totally right. It's like a constant tug of war between the network and Mark and like the things that he tries to get away with and things that he thinks are funny and are really just like horribly offensive or things that will get us sued or canceled. There's this app where you can put your face on the characters and have you seen this? Yeah. And it, he's gone too far. He showed me this Hans Gruber thing this morning from Die Hard and I couldn't actually tell the difference. Like he looked exactly, I thought he just showed me a, like a, a mashup of Die Hard. I mean, he looks eerily like Alan Rickman as Hans Gruber. I mean, the fact that he looks that much like a supervillain, I don't know what to read into that, but it doesn't matter. Cause I mean, his lawyer got back to him and told him he can't actually show this footage on air. So if you want to see it, you're probably gonna have to go to social media cause Mark will probably be sharing it on there a lot. In fact, he'll probably reshare it just for this episode. So, you know, shameless self-promotion. So on our Demon, you know, the metal work came out great. The body work looks amazing. So now at that point, it comes over to us over here where we prime it. We'd like to get three to four good coats of primer on it. I use the VP2050 and the VH7050. It's a real thick primer, it does great. Spray it about 70 degrees, and then once that car's primed, we like to let it sit for a couple of weeks, make sure it's fully cured, then we can bring it back in and get it blocked out and get it reprimed. Now this is not the first A-body that we've ever done. It's the first Mr. Norm's car, it's just not the first A-body. First A-body we ever did at Graveyard Cars, for those of you who didn't get a chance to see it, was Jim DeLucci's little 1972 Duster. Really nice guy from New Jersey calls me up, says, hey, that there, talks like Tony, that there, uh, 
dust store used to have it. I got the original window sticker. Well, this guy did. He had the original window sticker to a car he bought when he was 16. When he was a kid, he went in with his mother. He laid down his hard-earned savings and bought him a 72 duster. A few years after that, he had to sell the duster and never saw it again. We all came to the conclusion after looking for it for a while, it was gone. So I told him I'd build him one, and that's what we did. One of the best moments I'll always remember is when he came in here and he saw that car for the first time, and then I got to go for a ride with him. It pulled hard, it's 340, put a little bit of a camshaft in it, but he hadn't driven a stick in a long time, so it was kind of funny to watch him buck jump in the car until he got used to it, but then it was like, he just jumped right back in again. So while the car is curing, what we like to do is start getting some of the jam work done inside the car, door jams, hoods, all that good stuff. But before I can even do that, I'll grab Shane because he is so OCD on seam sealing, it's not even worth anybody in this facility to seam seal. It's just safest to say, Shane, here you go. And then he'll spend like a whole day seam, I mean, maybe two days but he does a good job and that car is sealed off very meticulously. And then once he's done, I'm able to start my paint work. Now here's a very important step that we started doing when Shane came in. So he's a really good body man. He came out of the collision world working on late model cars, iCar certified. Mm -hmm. He's the one that really introduced us to using cavity wax in all of these cars. This is a process that after the seam sealing and everything's done, the DP90 epoxy's put on, you wanna protect inside the frame rails where you can't see. So he brought in this whole little contraption, I think it's a 3M product, and he does a cavity wax with this long straw. He shoots wax inside the areas you cannot see. All that bare metal from having the car dipped is now protected. Once the seam seam is wrapped up and all the cavity wax is done, I'll start doing the jam work, meaning engine bay, inside the cab, the trunk, the doors, fender, hood, get all that stuff jammed, painted with the red. Then the car gets put together, blocked out, and then painted. Before I actually lay out the paint, I use the 2004 sealer over everything. It'll cover 320 scratches, but we finish off in 600. But we put a coat over that just to ensure there is no little scratches or imperfections. Let that sit for about a half hour before I top coat it with the single stage. One of the things you probably notice is we put a lot of material on these cars. We put a lot of paint on them, a lot of primer on them, a lot of sealer on them, a lot of cavity wax just mentioned, an undercoating seam sealer. If Chrysler had done that back in the day, and I'm not putting them down, they were mass production, they didn't want the cars to last 30 years. That's not a good business move for anybody that's making cars, so they didn't care. I care that when I see Mr. Malmberg in 30 years from now, God willing, it has a beautiful finish to it. If Chrysler had done all the steps that we do to it, I wouldn't have a job today. With the DMN, we're using the PPG, Deltron, single stage, FE5. Any solid color I'll do in single stage, it's quicker, it's like four coats, as opposed to base coat, I have to go in there and put approximately seven or eight coats of color. After that, three coats of clear. With this, this is just one shot, so it's four coats, I give it about a half hour in between each coat. We use the DCX61 hardener and the DT885 reducer. It's a higher temp reducer, which I'll, we like to use because the paint lays out a little bit flatter. I love single stage, PBG's colors, all their products are top notch. It's quick and easy and looks beautiful. Let's take a look at how our Demon compares with a few other Brand X poop boxes. This crap box is identified by Brand X as crap box, and that's right. This heap is only 169.7 inches short in overall length on a 97 inch wheelbase. In contrast, the 1971 Demon is a compact but far from little 192.5 inches in overall length set on an agile and maneuverable 108 inch wheelbase. And the longer the wheelbase, the smoother the ride. 
Demon's higher horsepower V8 engines offer excellent performance with the optional three-speed torque flight automatic transmission. Demon offers two well-proven economy slant six engines at 125 and 145 horsepower, plus two V8 engines. The Dung Box offers a small displacement four-cylinder engine and its one optional engine falls far short of matching the horsepower of Demon's base six. The Dung Box has no V8s. Okay, so when we got started on the 340 Demon engine, it was pretty ugly. Besides the fact that it sat for so many years, it was really rusty. Anything that wasn't tied to the engine through numbers, we replaced with donor parts. Once we got the engine off the K-member, we put it on the engine stand and got it disassembled. The most important part of this build is to save the engine block because it is the numbers matching engine for this build. We were able to do that with no troubles because once we got it apart, it was actually pretty clean inside. I mean, it had some carbon and some yucky old oil, but overall it was in pretty good shape. This meant we could do a straightforward engine rebuild to Mr. Norm's specs and finish building it out. Here's one of the things you learn as a good manager. If one employee says another employee did something, and you go over and talk to that employee that he said did something, he's gonna deny it. That's what they do. So what I've learned is get them both in there. Hi, Will. Hey. How are you? Good, how are you? Um, he had a question for you. I do? Mm -hmm. I did? You what? did last night. I just Notice wondered. the 340s over here for our 71 yeah. Demon? Yeah. Any questions about it? I mean, just the normal stuff. What, what would the normal question be? Well, I'm sure it's not put together. 100%, that's been my biggest problem. Doug, he says that sometimes you don't put these things completely together, then you bring pieces over individually that need to be painted. Literally right after I'm done. Yeah, well, <laughs> What's he wrong says with that? that if he doesn't Just... prep them out correctly, they don't get painted correctly. If he doesn't scuff them, you don't scuff them. Doug says that Will doesn't clean them very well. If I say that to Will, he's gonna say, Doug, he's drunk. Why not just get him in there? This is about peace. That's why they call me the great peacekeeper. I should win one of those prizes. What are those prizes for peace? The Nobel Peace Prize? Nobel, yeah, a Nobel Peace Prize, that's right. He's brought them in here just as a test and walked through the window and you just walk in and shoot it. So. Just, yeah. Mark's not about peace at all. He likes to stir everybody up and then me being the good boss and team leader that I am, I have to walk around and build up all of my guys and pick them back up. That's never once, ha once happened. I get half. And then the paint just falls off. Yeah, because it's what you it's do. your story, I'm just here. Well, for, I don't even know what you I do, I just feel actually. like we should get everybody in one room when this kind of backbiting starts. Okay. Yeah, no I gotta agree with Will. Mark loves stirring things up and causing drama. He says he doesn't, but he does. Yeah, Mark's got issues, you know. When he causes grief, you watch him. I mean, he actually skips. What the only time I get a complete engine, 100% done, ready to go, is if Mark is involved. If you're involved, I get a water pump. <laughs> and you'll be like, yeah, it's done. I'm like, well, I'm not mechanically inclined. I don't know but enough. You know there's more to an engine than a water pump. Correct. Sure. Yeah, but you know how to paint parts, right? I'm as surprised at their behavior as you are, okay? I don't know why they can't get along. What were you saying he doesn't do? He doesn't clean the engine. He doesn't scuff it. He doesn't make the paint stick. Really? Are you ready to Sometimes paint this right Sometimes the paint's right running off. Sometimes the paint's not even on there. Really? Yeah. I can't even tell Doug what I want. I just gotta just smile and nod. Because my mom loves Doug. So Doug can come here, get all riled up, treat me bad, and then I say one negative comment, and all there's like 30 cameras on me that pick everything up, and then you edit it just to show that moment, and then my mom gets upset at me. And you're telling me that I'm... What? Doing something wrong? You know the movie Needful Things, Leland, the bad guy? He just went through the whole town, stirred everything up, and then just sat back and watched it all fall apart. Peace and harmony, like I said, that's what I'm about. The love you take is equal to the love you make. And you know who said that? What philosopher said that? John Lennon.
Well, he also said, I am the egg man, I am the walrus. So I'm not sure I'd take it as gospel. I'll let you talk amongst yourselves. Well, I'm not saying that you're a bad guy, but it's what I've had to do working with you. I've had to lower my standards. To drippy, wet, runny, well, no yeah. pain in it. <laughs> oh, really? great, yeah. Well, yeah. You know, he is the devil. Let's see how much you can remember. True or false, the 1971 Demon came standard with a three-speed torque flight automatic transmission. Think you know the answer? Find out after the break. So let's find out how good your memory really is. Did the 71 Demon come standard with the three-speed torque flight automatic transmission? If you said false, then you've been paying attention. The three-speed torque flight actually came as an option on the Demon in 1971. A Demon buyer gets more stability and comfort because the car itself and the wheelbase are longer and because of torsion bar suspension. And how about tires? The Demons and Comets are 645x14s. The blue oval boxes are just little 645x13s. When you compare, carefully compare values and buy wisely. It's obvious that the 1971 Demon is a lot more car for just a little more money. Once Mark and Leland from Needful Things was done with all his silliness, we were able to move forward and get the 340 painted for the Demon. And not the Demon, the car, not Mark. I try to get these guys as much gun time as possible. So if you're spraying all the time, it's a rhythm, it's a pattern. So I had no like DP 90, 100 cars in like a weekend. I do the same thing with Brody. The engine need to have the DP 90. I let Brody spray it, it's good experience. But that's what also allows the paint to stick to the engine. So after Brody's got the DP90 on, I give it about a half hour, make sure it's good and dry. And then we do it in a single stage. We just hold out the metallic. It still looks the same. That's what Mark came up with years long before me. And it actually works out really good. So three or four coats of the single stage with no metallic, you're in and out, and it looks great. Now, once Will and Dougie ironed out their differences, we were able to get the engine painted. It's now moved over to the machine shop. It's time to do a fire up. So Dougie and I are getting ready to fire up the 1971. 340. Six pack. Uh-huh. Factory 340 six pack in 71. No, I got one. You got one. All you right. did really good. Now, one thing I would like to point out on this, Dougie likes when he assembles his engine to put the distributor in 180 degrees out. He has it where it's supposed to be just 180 degrees out. That's part of his charm. What I did yesterday was I had him go ahead and assemble everything. And I said, is the distributor exactly where you want it? Do you believe that will start? And he said, yes, I do believe it'll start. After you left, I picked it up, turned it 180 degrees, and put it back in again. And it's my suspicion based on that that the engine will run fine now. There's something <laughs> up there that's 180 degrees out. And you can't help it in your brains, uh -oh. whatever's up in there. Oh. Now, Mark is right about this. No matter how many times I install this distributor the way I think it should go, it's usually 180 degrees out. Oh, oh, oh! oh. It's not firing. More advance? Not yet. And I always put the distributor in backwards every time, right? It sounds like Mark made a preemptive strike. Turn the exhaust on. Okay. You guys see here, we've got them hooked up to our exhaust system so we can run it inside the shop. Very important. It's raining and cold and miserable outside, so we have this installed. It's a very good little system, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, why don't you turn the master power on? The red T-handle. It's not a T-handle, but yeah, the red handle. Got that. All right, let's turn the fuel pump on and see what that looks like. Check for leaks. Spraying. Nice. All right, let's just try it right there. Go ahead and give us coil power. And crank it, let's see what it does. 
Oh. That actually started. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> now that's so weird because I put the distributor in, huh? Uh, let's just go ahead and try it. It's a little advanced. Let's kick it back a little bit. Try it again. A little advanced, a little advanced. Let's kick it back a little bit more. So when Mark says it's advanced, that means where the distributor is sitting at that time isn't right, and the normal firing of the cylinders is advanced too much. So all we do is rotate the distributor to hinder the timing. Valve train's a little noisy, which is normal. Try it again. And we have an oil leak. Take a look at that. That I'm going to assume is compliments to the guy who put the oil filter adapter on, my cousin Dougie. Moi. So we're gonna cut right now, and, and when we come back after this commercial break, we'll have that fixed. Sounded good though. Yeah, it runs good. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. All right, and cut. Let's have a look at the 71 Demon alongside the Maverick and Comet. It'll be a straight shot look, and we'll take the good with the bad. Take a look here at how these hoods stay open. The Demon's is counterbalanced, stays open by itself. Both of the dung heaps use a flimsy prop rod. Extra value, Demon's worth more. A Demon buyer gets more power. The standard Demon's six cylinder engine is 125 horsepower. Vomit and Dipstick only have 100. Now here on the oil filter adapter, those of you who are familiar with these, on the 340 they used an oil filter adapter because of the exhaust manifold on the right hand side. It had to come out at a certain angle and go back. If it came straight off of the block, it would have hit the manifold. So they put this adapter on there. This particular adapter, we leave it loose. We're supposed to tighten it down before we fire it up. Once you put the manifold on there and you know exactly where it goes, you set the little angle on it, boom, you're done. Dougie just happened to forget. So he is taking that off, resealing it, and tightening it down. Once he has all that done, we should have no leaks at that area and can continue to run the engine. And let's try bumpity bump. Did it? Manifold paint start to burn off. Sounds good so far. That's great. No leaks. No leaks. Okay, so the engine sounded really good. They all rattled a little bit when they first start out, but it didn't take long to quiet down. Once it warmed up, it ran great and no leaks. So we shut it off here so we can top off the radiator. Just like it's in a car, you got to purge the air out of it. Once that thermostat opens, which I believe right now it's open. A lot of water goes into the block, which makes the radiator low. So top off the radiator, and I think we're in shape. This is awesome. I think we can move this bad boy over to the engine stand, install transmission onto the bell housing. From there, we'll build out the suspension, which you have all the pieces ready. Uh -huh. You just haven't built it out yet. Yep. OK. And then we will put it into a 1974 Dodge Demon. 74? Sorry, 70. Did change years? 73. No. What year's our Demon? 71. Yeah, just when you think they're from another planet, they come to Rooster out of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love it. Okay, so the importance of today is every car that you've been in the booth with me so far, we've done base coat, clear coat. We're laying anywhere from 7, 10, 12, 13 coats of color. And then once that dries, we have to go over the top of it with the clear coat. This is our first FE5 single stage car that we've done since you've been here. And because it's single stage, it's a, the process is so much quicker. We do four coats and then we're done. You know, I've been working really hard with Brody the past six, seven months now. I'm trying to teach him all the aspects of painting, the processes. There's a lot to it. And for somebody that doesn't have any experience, you really just got to slow down, take your time and kind of baby steps. And we're now we're getting to the point where I'm able to start cutting them loose a little bit more, so that way the end goal is he'll be painting sooner rather than later. Right? Yeah, Dad, I know I don't pick everything up quite as quickly as you'd like me to, no, you but don't. I, am, I am still learning and I'll get there eventually. 
your sister can paint already, and she's two. That's also a squeezy. Yeah, well, she does paint with squeezies. Yeah. It does cover very quick, so it's like a clear with color in it, just to make it easier for you to understand. Yeah. So I don't have to go and put clear coat over it. It's a one and done deal. Okay. Uh, how much time in between coats usually? Uh, it's not. Um, Yo! I don't understand. Mark can't stand the fact that I'm teaching Brody. I, and that really makes no sense because the end goal, it's all better for Mark anyways. And I'm teaching him all the stuff that Mark taught me, you know, with his genius. Why did you air quote his genius? Because Mark's not genius. This, he wrote the question. Everyone at home knows this. It's not my words. The big day, having a big fight. Round 15, Apollo Creed. You're in there, you're bouncing around side to side, throwing jabs. I don't think there's 15 rounds. I think it's yeah, there's 12. 15 rounds of it's professional 12. boxing. It's only 12. 12. Don't question me about how many times I was in the ring and how, for how long. I was the one there getting beat up. You were never in a ring. I'm trying to train. I'm trying to be a motivator, all right? Much like Mickey was in, in the Rocky series. He wasn't hogging the limelight. He was trying to turn him into a fighter. I'm trying to turn Will into the great painter. He, he's good now. He could be great. And I'm also trying to help his kid. Lil Ken, <laughs> this is important stuff, right? You're yeah. getting ready to do your first single stage paint with your dad, right? Pops, we call him. Is he walking you through the steps? How much different this can be than, say, a base coat clear coat? Yeah. Okay, and, and basically the difference between a base coat clear coat and a single stage is? Uh, how many coats go on? Okay, so that's not the answer. Now, <laughs> this is why I'm in there, right here. He should know. If Will would have took the time just to explain to him carefully and check for understanding the difference between a base coat clear coat and a single stage. What if Rocky hadn't learned from Mickey that women weaken legs, All right? Well, he'd have been out gallivanting around and he would have lost the fight. If he didn't have that kind of motivation, where would he be today? Where would Rocky be? I'll tell you where he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be the world boxing champion, okay? Undefeated for many years. You know it's not real. He's not really a world boxing champ, right, Mark? I, yeah, I'm well aware of that, Peter. Thank you. I'm just here to kind of motivate you, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it's like in Rocky Three when they're running on the beach and Apollo's trying to get Rocky to run faster, and then all of a sudden uh, she says it's okay to fight, and no, that's two. That's Rocky Two. Yeah. Okay. So do you find Mark's motivational talks, like, helpful or useful? Nope. Do you think he's just delusional? He's lost his mind? Yep. What do you think, Will? Mark's never had a mind. There, there, there is no... Has he lost it? So it's Eye of the Tiger is what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but you I... You've seen Rocky too. You know, I've seen them all. Were there at the zoo? The mark that I met 27 years ago was gone. And out there, Pluto. Now it's... You know, I'm not good with planets and shit, but whatever's past Pluto, he's there. Nothing. Pluto's it. Pluto, oh. Pluto doesn't even count. Why? I don't know. Oh, God. You were almost smart for a minute. God, I bought into it. <laughs> I'm not an astronaut, I'm a painter. Yeah. You're in your air quotes. Anyway, they're at the we, zoo. I, oh, yeah, she, we went to, uh, I took you to the zoo. And she that tells him, um, he says he wants to be the yeah. I spend the rest of my life with you. You know, well, you know, a big What's dummy like me, you What's know. It? It? Hey, yo, you know, a big dumb coconut like me. This is Rocky Balboa. Cover like magazine. Um, okay. Eye of the Tiger. So let's get our That's what you need to have when you're up. in here. We'll go you're through the whole process and walk you through it, and then we'll be pretty you know, good. All lyrics, but it's a very motivational type of song, you understand? So I'm going to get some of that music plumbed in here, but this is the big one. It's round 15. You're going the distance. You finally got to go the distance with him. Hey, yo. You know, all everyone do is not be a bum from the neighborhood. You know, a bum from the neighborhood. If I could be standing when that bell rings, I'd know for the first time, you know. Be there for the first time. So, you know. Hey, you know, and that, that's Adrian. The demon weighs 2,930 pounds, over 300 pounds heavier than either of the Ford hotshots. Besides, 
you can not only buy the optional 145 horsepower 6, but also the 230 horsepower 8. In fact, if you want to go to the Demon 340, you'll get a standard 8-cylinder engine that gives 275 horsepower. And the Demon's worth more because of its size, weight, and suspension to make it more stable. You'll get more looks in the Demon than the brand X-Piles. So I went to do the final paint on the Demon. I had Brody come in with me just to be able to watch the process and try to just understand what I'm doing. So he's getting hands-on training and he's actually going in there and seeing it being applied. Whether it be clear coat or single stage, I always start with the roof and then work my way down at like a 50% overlap. You do your first pass and then you literally just come down half of that and do another pass and it ensures there's no dry spray. It lays out really nice and stays super wet. You know, a lot of hours go into the prep process from blocking, masking it up, washing it. That's actually the most important part to ensure that you have a great paint job. Once that car goes in the booth, it's 100% on me of how it comes out. You know, is it, did it lay out like glass? And I always try to do the best job that I can because I kick everything over to Noah to cut and buff and I want to make his job easy. I'll finish a car, it looks beautiful, and then here comes Noah and he's just walking around. And it could be a sheet of glass, perfect, and he'll find like a dirt nib that doesn't even exist. He's that thorough on that stuff. So it is all on me, but Noah holds me to a very high standard. Paint job looks great. Thank God I don't have to cut and buff it. That's got body lines all over it. So this is one car I'm super happy that I can just kick off to him and walk away. Let's see how many of you have been paying attention. How much horsepower is packed into the Dodge Demon standard six-cylinder engine? 100, 125, or 115? Do you think you know the answer? Stay tuned after the break to see if you're correct. So, do you think you know the correct answer? How much horsepower is packed into the Dodge Demon standard six-cylinder engine? If you said 125, then you are right on the money. The Ford Dipstick or Mercury Vomit don't even come close. Those two steaming piles barely register with the pathetic 100 horses. And here's another nice Dodge Touch in the Demon at no extra charge. These very convenient seatbelt retractors. You have to pay extra Bunsen burners on the Ford heaps. Demon is superior in fuel tank capacity too. Like most of the other measurements and standards, it all adds up to why Demon's worth more. Okay, so you're talking about a 340 here, right? This is a 1971 Dodge Demon with a 340 in it. Other than the intake manifold and other than the fuel pump, it's a basic straightforward 340. Things over at Mr. Norm's changed a lot in the world of induction and the world of fuel delivery. Now in 1971, when Mr. Norm was selling these cars and he was doing the performance, he says, hey, you're gonna get a six pack on it. You couldn't get a six pack on a Dodge Demon. You could only get them on a AAR Cuda or a Trans Am Challenger in 1970. In 1972, he topped that by putting on a Paxton supercharger. So if you think the 340 six packs rare, get into the 72 Demons, the 72 Mr. Norm's cars that have an actual supercharger on them, all under the hood, made by Paxton. If we look carefully down here, you'll see this chrome fuel pump. That was what he did, that was part of the package. Now he doesn't call out that they were chrome, but the one on this car was chrome, and I've seen other ones that are chrome. They're definitely a Holley high performance fuel pump versus the factory original one, which is a cast finish. So since this had a chrome one on it, I sourced an original one just like it, and that's what you see. As crude as these fittings are, that's what Mr. Norm did. He wasn't worried about emulating the factory like we are. He was worried about giving the customer what they paid for, a performance package. The Mr. Norm's 346 pack. This line coming up the fuel pump, you'll see, this is one big thing, instead of following along here on the passenger side, like you would on any of our six pack cars, whether it's a 446 pack or a 346 pack, the fuel inlet is on the passenger side on Mopar. Here, you see the filter 
coming up here over into this log, this hexagon fuel log or fuel rail. That means these lines represent the fuel inlet for the carburetors. The reason they're on the passenger side and not on the driver's side is these are not the Mopar six pack carburetors. These carburetors, if you check that number right there, and it's the same one as here, we had Scott Smith go through these carburetors for us up at Harms. Did a beautiful job, they look factory. If you get in the book and you check that 3659, that is for a 1967 Corvette 427 Tri-Power. Mr. Norm put General Motors carburetors on our sacred Mopars because they were cheaper back in the day. So look at that carburetor, that one, that one. These are off of a 427 Corvette originally. That meant the fuel had to come in on this side. So how he did it, he engineered this little aluminum hexagon rail. All these crude little clamps that you see, these worm clamps, if you will, that's the way he did it. We emulated what this car looked like before it ever got torn apart. Plus we've had other people who have really helped us a great deal with the information. I met a gentleman named Eric Walker. Thank you, Eric, because he has been a godsend. He sent me original pictures of survivor cars. Now, we had a few pictures of this one, but not very many. The induction system was actually off of it when it came to me, and the original owner only had one or two kind of crappy pictures, so we couldn't see everything. Walker sent me everything. He sent me original survivors, sent me original literature, showed me what the original Siegel linkage looked like. He still had some in a blister pack. He's just a really neat guy that loves the Mr. Norms. I'll tell you how much he loves them. This is cool. He's got Mr. Norms original Dodge van. I think it's a 76 or a 77 that has the Mr. Norms funny car painted on the side of it. So when you glance at it, you think it's a funny car going down the road and you realize that it's a van with the funny car painting on the side of it. I would love to have that van. So this crazy looking linkage, this is made by Siegel, S-E-G-A-L. They are also the ones that provided that air cleaner I'll show you in a minute. It works on a similar principle to the factory one. If you go over to a factory 446 pack, you'll see that the linkage runs down low and it is more of a progressive linkage. This is a mechanical secondary linkage. So what you see happen here with all this craziness is when I pull the throttle, you see the center carburetor open first, then it gets to this stopper. When it gets to that stopper, that's when it opens both the outboards mechanically. See this one open up all the way? How and when those secondary outboard carburetors come on is how far this little adjustment nut is. If I moved it up forward more, it would come open faster we may end up moving it back and making it engage a little bit later. Here's something that's really cool. This is the air cleaner you would get, no problem. It's a nice little aluminum air cleaner. Just sets down on there all pretty like that. Now I don't have the element, the filament that goes in here, but what I wanna show you is, this is the air cleaner top. <laughs> Tri-Power is definitely not a Mopar term. If I was leaning under the hood, I'd want this to set right there so I could read the word Tri-Power. Ain't happening. You have to turn it around so this is backwards for it to line up with those holes. Why? Because the 1967 Corvette, the hood opens from the back. So you're standing there looking at the engine like this. So as crazy as that is, that is what a 71 Mr. Norm's induction system looks like for a uh, Mr. Norm's demon. Well, let me tell you a story. Been doing this thing about 12 years. Nobody cares how good or bad the first nine episodes are. You're judged on the last three before you go off the air. You see what I'm saying? I can sit right here and drink my coffee, which has a little bit of creamer in it and some Nestle's cocoa. Make horrible sounds like that. People at home are throwing stuff at the TV. The old man said, get him off your big nose, rhino. I can't stand that guy. And the women are laughing, saying, I love him. I love him, right? And all the time, it don't matter whether you love me or hate me. As long as you go on the internet and say if you love me or hate me, I make the same money. <laughs>